Here's a sneak peek at the outtakes and the gag reel from the film. I hope you enjoy. Sorry, sorry. I didn't even do that. That one was my idea. <laughs> an Iraqi mortar. <laughs> they call you Bloodshot. Seriously? Barry Bloodshot. Brian Bloodshot. Or Debbie. Or David. You had me at blood. Dinesh, are we sure it's Bloodshot? Check out this exclusive deleted scene from my new movie, Bloodshot. So these things, these things brought me back to life? Well, we did. I cannot remember anything. My best guess is the nanites managed to save the hard drive, but not all the data. Yeah, but I remembered how to talk. Clearly, I remembered how to walk. What's important is that you now know more than you've ever known before. What's the square root of 7,921? Oh, come on. 89. Yes. I went to meet Dave Wilson, the director, at his company, Blur, and I brought my son, who was eight years old at the time, and after he showed us the whole project, my son turned to me and said, Daddy, you are bloodshot. Bloodshot's obviously like a very strong, confident, like alpha male persona, but there's a component to Ray Garrison in this film that is very vulnerable, and I think Vin was very excited about that. Vin's playing this broken character, this broken figure who's lost everything, but doesn't know that. And actually, I think it's gonna be a performance that people haven't seen from Vin before. When's the last time you saw me? Five years ago. Five years. What's fascinating about the character is that He's motivated by something we'd all be motivated by, which is love. And what's tragic about the character is how love is manipulated. And I was drawn to the idea of playing a character that had superhero-like powers, but also kind of embraces his post-traumatic stress disorder. Vin obviously brings a huge physicality to the roles he plays, and it was definitely not something we were going to shy away from. Are you questioning what my body can and can't do? He has a great team he's worked with over the years, J.J. Perry and Troy Robinson. Like, it was the same family of people, right? You know, really catering to what he does best. <laughs> first day he was on set, you could just see all the attention get to him, and he understood it, and then he used all that power to help the production and help guide us. It's why he's a producer on the film, because he legitimately did the job, and he just elevates everything, because he demands a higher level. Every morning, I come in here, and I get a, get a good, quick workout, <clears throat> and then I go to each crew member, and I tell them how much I appreciate their work efforts and how much I appreciate their expertise. He's incredible to work with, man. He's fun, he's entertaining, he comes in, he's always listening to music and he sets his mood with it. He takes it very seriously, which is very exciting as an actor. He's such a big star, so I was definitely nervous to work with him. But once you meet the guy, you just see that he's like this sweet, fun person. So let me take a good picture with you guys. But also it always wants your input. He's giving me life advice and, you know, advice on how to approach the business of it all. And so it's great of him, someone so old, so bald, to partake that wisdom on someone so young and handsome and beautiful. Thank you, Wiggins. You're welcome. It was about to start. 
Sam was fabulous. I'm worried that I may have a bunch of angry Outlander fans on me when they realize we made him not a very nice person. But he's excited about uh, sort of playing the villain side of things. The character, Jimmy, is... Uh He's a piece of work. He is an ex-Navy SEAL, but he's got a bit of an attitude as well, and it's quite nice to play something completely different. Well, I may be an asshole, but you're the toy soldier. Will you wind you up? Point you're the next victim. Put you back in here and push this button. And Jimmy had his legs blown off uh, in an IED explosion, and so he was given these amazing legs. <laughs> and also a second set of arms that gives him great strength, great power. And that really was quite interesting. And working with our stunt team just to, to work out how he moves, how he fights. He's a bit of a tank, actually. <laughs> Sam bulked up quite a lot for the role. A lot of prosthetics on him, and Sam was wandering around in these little green frog legs all the time. And as an actor, I imagine it makes it a little difficult to sort of really stay in character while all that's going on, but he was fabulous every day. I think it's a pretty good look, you know? I think uh, all the kids will be wearing uh, green trainers by the end of this movie. I always knew I wanted to have one heavy practical sequence in the film, like the tunnel sequence. What the hell's going on? What? I like the sort of claustrophobic nature and the visual quality of what I could do, but no one lets you shut a tunnel down for two weeks anywhere, so we had to build it. That's probably one of my favorite scenes in the, in the film. I really like the choices that Dave made and Jock, the, the TP, made on that. It's a super iconic look. It's like red and white, so that was awesome, but the, the, what comes with that is a huge challenge because you can't shoot with real flower. Real flower, if it was in a tunnel, if someone lit a match or a spark dropped, the whole place would have exploded. So, so it sounded like it was a pretty brutal shooting experience. Oh, that's not good. It was very unpleasant in there, and Vin comes in, you know, in wardrobe, and everyone else is standing around him in hazmat masks, and you're like, oh, this might not last. He did one take, it looked so amazing, and the sort of all the crew was like erupted when we saw it on the monitors. And then he stayed in there for three days, shooting all those slow motion shots with us after that, which was fabulous. Because it would never have looked as good had we tried to do it with VFX. Which is why it looks so great, because we had our star doing a lot of the stunts and trying to make it better. Now, I'm not pulling this one out. Each take, he's like, how can we push this further? It also really endeared the crew together. Through all that strife came this incredible energy that I think is on screen. Sounds cool. Bloodshot is an incredibly popular character in comics. It is often considered one of the four or five most popular characters in the kind of the modern era. We were literally attempting to create a different spin on the superhero narrative. Bloodshot is a real sort of science grounding to the comics that I love. So I knew this was going to be something special. And initiate sequence. Welcome to the circus. We had such a great cast. Everybody was so committed. You could almost do a movie on each of the characters. When a piece of your casting as big as Vin falls into place, you sort of have to then take a look at your film that you're making and build the best structure around that. The way that people are really gonna relate to the movie is feeling a connection with characters. I'm very fortunate to be working with some amazing actors and Vin Diesel, you know, who wouldn't want to work with Vin Diesel? Anytime they lead with Vin Diesel's involved, I just go, yeah. I want to do that because I'm a big fan. And the project is dope as f We are leading the way in the greatest human advancement of all time. He's unlike anything we've seen before. And he's entirely in our control. Commencing memory fabrication. And initiate sequence. What happened? You got yourself killed. You have been given a second chance. I've developed an army of soldiers like yourself. Improved, enhanced. Welcome to the circus. The technology in your veins will make you faster, stronger, and heal you instantly. Something doesn't feel right. They've been manipulating you. Set the next target for elimination. You are my weapon. You made me, but you can't control me forever. 
I'll come for you. I'm looking forward to it. You can't get in, Kenny. No chance. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, shit. Lisa here with some Vin Diesel trivia for the filming of Triple X. The actor had a fake Dungeons and Dragons tattoo put on him because he is obsessed with the role playing adventure game and has stated multiple times that he's played the game for 20 plus years. So as an acknowledgement of this dedication, he had a huge fake tattoo of his D&D character's name, Melkor, on his lower abdomen. Do you like my shirt? You can get one for yourself in the link in the description.